It's one of several commercial spacecraft contracted by NASA to resupply the International Space Station. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft provides the U.S. Space Agency with proven design features and an evolvable architecture that could extend beyond the task of resupplying the $150 billion orbital outpost. Cygnus's design heritage dates back to the early ISS program and is poised to be a key piece of architecture for NASA's Artemis Moon program and the agency's aspirations for a permanent human foothold in deep space. In this video, we'll learn about the Cygnus spacecraft, how it came to be, and what potential it has in humanity's quest to push out toward deep space destinations. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when the next video is released. I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Cygnus is owned and operated by Northrop Grumman. The vehicle was named for the Cygnus constellation in the Northern Hemisphere. It's also the Greek word for swan. The spacecraft consists of two sections, a pressurized cargo module for internal supplies, equipment, and experiments, as well as a berthing mechanism at the top, and a service module which provides power, propellant, and propulsion and navigation equipment. There are two variants of the spacecraft, standard and enhanced. The former was discontinued in 2014 in favor of the latter, which offers more payload volume. The standard version was 3.07 meters wide and 5.08 meters long, with a pressurized volume of 18 cubic meters. It's powered by two three-panel rectangular solar arrays on either side. The cargo module's mass was about 1,600 kilograms empty. The enhanced version, however, extends the overall spacecraft height to about 6.39 meters by adding a third segment to the pressurized cargo module, increasing its overall volume to 27 cubic meters. This version traded the rectangular solar panels in for more efficient and less massive circular ultraflex solar arrays to provide up to 3.5 kilowatts of electrical power. The cargo module's mass without supplies for this version is roughly 2,000 kilograms. While the standard variant could carry uphill about 2,000 kilograms of pressurized cargo, the enhanced version increased that to up to roughly 3,500 kilograms. A grapple fixture was included at the base of each variant to allow the space station's robotic arm to capture the vehicle and berth it to the outpost. Additionally, the standard and enhanced variants could dispose of about 1,200 kilograms and 3,500 kilograms of trash and unneeded hardware respectively at the end of its mission. Both variants' pressurized cargo modules are built by Tiles Alenia Space in Italy and are, in part, based on the multi-purpose logistics modules used by the space shuttles to resupply the ISS between 2001 and 2011. The service module is now built by Northrop Grumman and is based on the Geostar and Leostar spacecraft buses, as well as components that were developed for the Dawn spacecraft, which went to the Dwarf Planet series between 2015 and 2018. The service module's propulsion system is powered by hypergols such as hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. More recently, the outside of the two parts have been modified with features such as mounting points for external hardware from the ISS. This would allow larger, unneeded equipment to be taken away from the space station for eventual disposal at the conclusion of Cygnus' mission. Cygnus is an unpiloted vehicle and autonomously rendezvous with the ISS, where the spacecraft is captured by the outpost's 17.6 meter long robotic arm. The arm then moves the spacecraft to the base of the Unity module, although the Harmony module could also be used as well, where it's berthed for the duration of its stay aboard the ISS. To get into orbit, Cygnus typically uses Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket, which launches from Virginia. However, on several occasions, the spacecraft utilized United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket, which launches from Florida. Once in space, it typically takes several days to arrive to the space station for berthing. The spacecraft typically remains there for between one and three months, giving astronauts and cosmonauts ample time to unload the vehicle and reload it with unneeded equipment. During this time, the spacecraft's main BT-4 engine can be used to help reboost the space station's orbit. However, that task is still primarily done by Progress spacecraft on the Russian segment of the ISS. At the end of Cygnus' stay at the ISS, it has the ability for standalone operations that can last anywhere between a few days and a few months depending on what mission managers need or if NASA has a long-term experiment inside. The most famous of these experiments are NASA's Sapphire Studies, which evaluate how fire spreads across certain materials in larger open areas. The results could, among other things, help future spacecraft designers ensure a more fireproof cabin, increasing astronaut safety. After all tasks are completed, the Cygnus is commanded to deorbit and burn up in Earth's atmosphere over the Southern Pacific Ocean. Developing Cygnus into the freighter it is today wasn't as straightforward as its counterpart, 
SpaceX is a Dragon spacecraft. In the early days of the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services program, which began in 2006 with the goal to transport cargo to the ISS using multiple commercial providers, NASA chose rocket plane Kistler and its K-1 launch vehicle alongside SpaceX and its original Dragon capsule. However, rocket plane Kistler missed several financial milestones required under the COTS agreement. Ultimately, NASA terminated its contract with rocket plane Kistler in 2007. The company would file for bankruptcy in 2010. In 2008, NASA chose Orbital Sciences to replace rocket plane Kistler. The company was awarded $1.9 billion to deliver up to 20 tons of cargo to the ISS through 2016 via six Cygnus space flights under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services program. Orbital Sciences would need to finish the development of their Antares rocket, which is a medium-class vehicle that uses a Russian-built engine on its first stage and a solid rocket motor originally built by Alliant Tech Systems for the upper stage. Antares launches from Pad 0A at Wallops Flight Facility at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport in Virginia. Its first demonstration mission occurred in April 2013 using a Cygnus mass simulator. Like Cygnus, the Antares is upgradable too, and the company has upgraded it throughout its life cycle. The first demo flight to the ISS by Cygnus occurred in September 2013 and launched atop an Antares 110 rocket. It reached the ISS several days later and was berthed to the Earth-facing port of the Unity module. From there, two more successful flights would occur before a third operational flight in October of 2014, Orb 3, ended in an explosion just seconds after liftoff. It would be found that a turbo pump failure in one of the Aerojet Rocketdyne AJ-26 engines ultimately caused the rocket to fall back down to the pad, creating a huge explosion requiring significant repairs for Pad 0A. Orbital Sciences worked to solve the problem and began the process of upgrading the Antares rocket and rebuild its pad. In the meantime, Alliant Tech Systems, also called ATK, merged with Orbital Sciences to become Orbital ATK by 2015. The combined company got the Cygnus program back on track, launching an enhanced variant atop a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket by December 2015, showcasing how the spacecraft can be compatible with different rocket designs. The loss of the Orb 3 mission in 2014 also showed the need for more than one independent operator for redundancy, as one accident could cause multiple months or even years of inactivity. With Cygnus flying successfully again, two more missions would fly atop an Atlas V rocket while Orbital ATK worked to ready their upgraded Antares 230 rocket. In 2014, NASA announced a second commercial resupply services contract, CRS-2, which was awarded to SpaceX and their Dragon 2 capsule, Sierra Nevada Corporation and their Dream Chaser cargo space plane, as well as Orbital ATK and their Cygnus spacecraft. The contract requires the delivery and disposal of pressurized and unpressurized cargo from the ISS through at least 2024 and likely beyond. Another corporate change took place in 2018 when Northrop Grumman acquired Orbital ATK. Now owned by Northrop Grumman, missions would have an NG in front of them, starting with the NG-10 mission in November 2018. The first CRS-2 mission occurred in November 2019 with the NG-12 mission. While it seems the Cygnus spacecraft is primed to continue to service the International Space Station for the rest of its operational life, currently expected to end somewhere between 2024 and 2028, Northrop Grumman is preparing for the future. In August 2019, NASA selected the company to develop a Cygnus-based minimal habitation module to form part of the first phase of the Lunar Gateway Outpost, which is expected to be a foothold for NASA's Artemis missions, starting with the second human lunar landing mission, possibly sometime in 2025. Called the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO, the module has an extended pressurized compartment at the same diameter of Cygnus. Overall, it'd be around 6 meters long and have a NASA docking system port at the forward end and two radial ports opposite of each other for additional modules or lunar landers to dock with and be assembled. While it was initially expected to be launched in 2023 as the second piece of the gateway, as of 2020, it's expected to be mated with the first piece, Maxar Technologies' power and propulsion element, on the ground. The combined stack would then launch atop a single rocket to be sent to a near-rectilinear halo orbit around the moon sometime in 2023 or 2024. The Lunar Gateway is expected to be a foothold for deep space exploration for NASA and its international partners, starting with the first moon base expected to be built at the Lunar South Pole by the end of the 2020s, pending funding. Moreover, Northrop Grumman is developing a cargo version of Halo in order to help resupply the Lunar Gateway. However, as of 2020, NASA has yet to select them as a provider and has instead selected SpaceX's Dragon XL for the Gateway Logistics Services program. Regardless, the Cygnus spacecraft design has had its heritage in the early ISS program and is currently an integral piece of the current logistics line for the outpost. 
All lessons learned about the Cygnus program are expected to be taken deeper into space in order to help permanently expand humanity's presence to the moon and other deep space destinations. What do you think of the Cygnus spacecraft? Do you think it's a good vehicle that can support humanity's supply needs beyond low Earth orbit? Or do you think another system would be better suited? Let me know in the comments below. This channel is approaching 500 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you all so much. If I've earned it, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe if you haven't already and share this video and others with friends and family. It helps support this channel and also lets me know what topics you're all interested in regarding human space exploration. Moreover, you can also follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. Additionally, you can visit orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching and until next time, at Astra.